Welcome to Metabolism Matters. I'm Jennifer Woolley. Today we'll be taking a look at using indirect calorimetry to feed a patient with a number of ailments, made even more complicated because of necrotizing fasciitis. This case we're going to look at involves a female patient in her late 40s. She had been sick for three weeks and was admitted to the emergency department with bad diarrhea and cellulitic changes of the leg. The patient's history included high blood pressure, asthma, hypothyroidism, bipolar disorder, and obesity. Now let's take a look at the patient's nutrition parameters. Height is 5 foot 8 inches. Actual body weight is 188 kilograms, which translates into a BMI, body mass index, of 63, and ideal body weight at 63.6 kilograms. So this patient was diagnosed with necrotizing fasciitis. She developed sepsis and acute respiratory failure. Her first day in the hospital, she had a below-the-knee amputation, which adjusted her ideal body weight to 60 kilograms. Sadly, she developed post-operative complications from the amputation that included diarrhea, a urinary tract infection, and poor wound healing. Wow, she certainly has a lot of healing to do. How can we help? Well, we can think about how we're going to feed her as she recovers. We can use predictive equations, but look at that. We get calorie needs anywhere from 1,656 calories all the way up to 2,024 calories per day. That's quite a bit of variation. What about indirect calorimetry? Is she a good candidate? She is. So let's do our calculations based on indirect calorimetry data. What do we find? Our patient needs 2,259 calories on day 8, and on day 14, she needs 2,730 calories. Had we relied on predictive equations, we may have underfed our patient. Also note that serial indirect calorimetry studies allow changes in energy expenditure to be identified, which promote appropriate feeding regimens through each phase of the recovery process. Fortunately, with indirect calorimetry-based feedings, this woman continued to improve. By hospital day 28, she was down in the rehab unit learning how to use a prosthetic device to move on with her life. Well, that's it for today. I'm Jennifer Woolley for Metabolism Matters. See you next time.